Do you have gum disease, which is causing inflammation of your heart, your arteries, and therefore risk for heart attack and stroke? Um, do you have bleeding, even bleeding that you might not notice, but the dentist notice or the hygienist notice when you're in the dentist's office? Have you asked? Um, do you have bad bacteria, bacteria that can cause inflammation in uh, pockets? In your gums. Uh, how do you manage those bacteria if you have the bad ones? And again, if you're over age 30, your probability of having gum disease is 50%. So you probably do have some stuff going on there. Let's talk about it. <clears throat> and this is Ford Brewer, PrevMed, heart attack and stroke. Um, <clears throat> First of all, what is, uh, what's the latest on this? As you can see from this Harvard Health uh, newsletter, they're beginning to even say treating gum disease can decrease heart attack, diabetes, and other problems. Now, <clears throat> what does gum disease look like? For those of you who are not familiar with it, our dentist friends get up every day and go to work. They want to see teeth that look and gums that look like this, but you can get retraction of the gums, further retraction, and then serious retraction like you see here. You may have heard the term getting long in the tooth. That was uh, an old term meaning somebody with, or a, a farm animal or a person was getting old, and that was due to gum retraction. The other thing you see here is going from a light, healthy pink to a dark, inflamed look. So that's what we're talking about. And you get a lot of bleeding with that, and you actually even get loss of bone. What do we mean? So this is the tooth. This is the bone that provides the socket around the tooth. As you get more and more plaque in between, this is the healthy side, and this is what it starts to look like when you get gum disease. Uh, plaque forms here uh, from food, from bacteria. It starts to create um, a mess. Um, <clears throat> you get inflammation of the uh, arteries and microvasculature around here, and you even get loss of the bone in the socket. There was a New York Times Health Magazine article about this, and uh, they give you this illustration of what it looks like from the tongue side. Again, a lot of inflammation, pockets, uh, redness, and uh, irritation going on in there. <clears throat> now, what are the experts? The uh, well, maybe the maybe not ex well the experts and the standards making body. How about the American Heart Association? The American Heart Association says there is a level A, cl plenty of level A evidence that periodontal disease, that's what PD stands for, is independently associated with arterial disease. Level A means you can't get any better than that. Uh, the scientific uh, evidence is the best available in terms of medical science and research. Here's the other key word, independently associated. In other words, if you're saying, well, maybe this is really due to diabetes, which we know is a major cause of inflammation, or maybe it's really due to sleep problems, things like that. No, it's not. It's totally independent of any other um, risk factor. Now, one thing to remember is that it does not say causal. Causality is a significant next step. And I think that uh, the, we're be about to put the uh, ne last nails in the coffin of that causality meaning does gum disease actually cause um, heart disease and I think that it is true and I think that even the, a the American Heart Association will admit that soon. Now if you're thinking about well maybe this is associated again with diabetes think about this. Um, from a population perspective periodontal disease happens much earlier than diabetes. With diabetes, remember that starts to happen uh, in the 50s and 60s. 
Uh, 50% of us have uh, insulin resistance by age 60. Look at gum disease. 50% of us have gum disease by age 30. So again, very dramatic difference population-wise in terms of the age of onset of this problem. Now, <clears throat> so you remember we talked about CIMT. Here they looked at a couple of the, uh, the bad actor bacteria, Porphyria gingivalis, uh, the actinomyces, some of the actinomyces uh, uh, group, T. forsythia, which is, again, some of the bad groups. And what they found was, if you look at CIMT, remember to measure the amount of plaque in the wall of the artery, that was related to the bad bacteria in your mouth. We keep referring to bad bacteria in your mouth, and I showed a, an image a few minutes ago. This is another way to see it a little bit closer. Here's the tooth, here's the gum, and here's the bone. Again, as you continue to eat, push food down in here, if you don't get it out, you start getting that plaque that we mentioned a few minutes ago. And that starts this process of inflammation, even leading up to bone loss. Now, I want to mention a couple of people here, Brad Bale and Amy Donin. Um, Brad and Amy are friends, colleagues, mentors. They alerted me to this issue in uh, their training sessions, and they've written a book called How to Beat the Heart Attack Gene, or Beat the Heart Attack Gene. I've referred to it many times, and um, again, very, very interesting information. I would highly recommend this book. Uh, Brad and Amy teamed up with another friend of mine, David Vigorist. He is a Vanderbilt-trained um, uh, lab scientist. So Brad's a physician, Amy's a, a nurse practitioner, and uh, David Vigorist is a lab scientist from Vanderbilt. They, again, published an article very recently which, I, again, I think puts some of the last nails in the coffin to say, no, it's not just independently associated. Gum disease actually causes heart attack and stroke inflammation. So here's a couple of ways that this happens. Uh, they call it, they talk about a triad of atherogenesis, in other words, triad of uh, creating plaque. First of all, LDL, lipoprotein, um, if you get an increase uh, in it, you've got a major risk factor here. And if you go back, you think about the standard medical community, they look at LDL, or bad cholesterol, and they look at the level. But remember, we look at some other things too. Endothelial permeability, or uh, intima permeability, and uh, binding of the lipoprotein to the intima. Remember, we talk about focus on the intima, and we talk about some tests uh, like microalbumin-creatinine ratio. Remember, the microalbumin-creatinine ratio shows whether that intima, the filter of the kidney, as well as the lining of the arteries, has cracks in it. If it does, it's going to be leaking albumin. A couple of other uh, helpful facts around this. They've reported associations of increase in blood pressure, both systolic and diastolic, to these bugs that we're talking about, these bad bacteria, that tend to increase as we get older and as we get periodontal disease. Guess what else happens? You remember plaque 2? That's another one of those tests that we have for inflammation. Plaque 2 is associated uh, with those bad actor actors, TF, um, uh, some of the other bad bacteria in there. Now, how does this happen? Well, for the biologists, we're going to go over some microbiology. Toll-like receptors is an issue. We'll talk about what that, just what that means in a minute. And then you get some direct damage via toxins to that endothelium again. Uh, actually, even the, the bacteria are, uh, are being seen to 
uh, adhere to the uh, Entomo. We're not going to talk about the T-cell story yet. That's, uh, that's for another time. Did I say toll-like cells? Yes, uh, that's what I was talking about. And again, as you see, a lot of this information came from Brad and Amy. I'm using a lot of their slides in helping explain some of this. Um, <clears throat> again, for the microbiologists, I did say toll-like receptors. Here's the, here, this diagram is cell uh, membrane, cytoplasm, and uh, nucleus of the cell. The toll-like receptors are things, are receptors that let things into the cell if they pay the toll. The bad bacteria, by the way, appear to readjust those toll-like receptors. Now, is there a way to test for this? Yes, there is. There's a company called My uh, um, Oral DNA. We routinely test our patients for this. Uh, My Periopath is the test associated with it. And as you can see here, we're looking for bad actors. <clears throat> and this is... Uh, a bad actor as well, what we're beginning to discover. So this patient uh, thought he was doing okay until we looked over here and clarified the issue. They do have significant, um, he does have a significant load of, um, of this bacteria. And these lines are where you're, you're starting to get actual bone loss. So again, that was a very rapid trip through um, heart attack and stroke being caused by gum disease. Now, what are the things that we can do? If it's a bacterial issue, can we, do, can we put um, good bacteria in there? Avora Pro is a product that does that. Uh, although we recommend it, there's not a lot of hard science uh, indicating that those work, at least that I'm aware of, just yet. What are these? Well, we've talked a few times about uh, flossing. Some of my dental patients, and a huge number of my patients are dentists, they talk about the floss or die section in their, in their practice where they're helping people learn how to floss. This recent information about flossing brought up a whole uh, debate about whether flossing works. Um, Flossing has some uh, biomechanical problems. Um, so I would recommend using soft picks or some other method as well as flossing. You want to get your gums to where they're no longer bleeding. Um, you do it just like Listerine every day. And in fact, I, I uh, work on those teeth, those gums after every meal. Again, a very uh, deep, quick review through this issue. And we'll probably have to cover some other uh, asso associations between gum disease and heart attack and stroke in later videos.